Hey guys, it's Wednesday, 3.07 p.m. on September 12th, 2018, and I have a lot of stuff I want to go over here with you, but first and foremost, I have to make a correction. On my last video, I said that buoy 41049 was within 100 miles of the eye of the hurricane, which is correct, but I had it plotted 100 miles to the south, and it actually should have been 100 miles to the north. Now, that doesn't change anything, thank God, because the wind speeds remain the same. I showed you the data as they were, they were recorded. But what I had actually plotted on Google Earth showed it in the wrong spot. It should have been 100 miles to the northeast. Instead, I put it 100 miles to the southwest. I still don't know how I did that. But luckily for us, the information does not change because the observations of the NOAA information and the buoy, wind speeds, and so forth remain the same. But I just want to clarify that. And if anybody actually included that information and you're concerned about it, just put the links to this particular video in your description because as I said, the data itself did not change, just the place where I marked it on Google Earth was wrong. So I apologize for that. And just to reiterate it, let me show you, I will draw a little, I will draw a little map for you here, a little line to show you that I had the buoy about 110 miles to the southeast of the eye of the hurricane, when actually it should have been about 100 miles to the north no, to the southwest of the hurricane, it should have been to the northeast, about 100. If anything, the argument is stronger because the, uh, the buoy is actually located about 10 miles closer to the eye of the hurricane. And since I went over data that spanned the course of three days, um, it, it anywhere, any, t any, any wind speeds, even close to hurricane strength, or even, you know, half of hurricane strength would have, would have, um, should have registered on this buoy and it did not. Now what we have is we have this buoy over here and I will show you that buoy 41047 is located at 27.5 and 71.5 and you can see right where I have this buoy is at 27.5 and 71.5. So I actually have it right this time and I apologize for the error from before. Now this buoy is not as close. This buoy is within 120 to 130 miles of the eye of the hurricane. However, based on the information that NOAA has given us, the, the um, radius of the eye of this hurricane is 170 to 175 miles from the eye of the hurricane, which means this buoy should still be being rocked, just like the other one, by tropical force storm winds at the very least. What are tropical storm force winds? They are winds between 39 and 73 miles an hour or 34 to 63 knots. So let's take a look at this buoy here and see if we're getting wind speeds anywhere close to 34 to 63 knots. Because if it drops below 34 knots, it's not tropical storm strength winds. And it should not be. It should not be in the the you know the uh, the radius of the eye of this hurricane because they're telling us that this hurricane actually extends 40 miles beyond this buoy, right? So let's take a peek here. What data do we have for that particular buoy? Let's look. Here's wind speeds and here are gusts. So we need to see wind speeds at the speed of. 34 knots. Do we see that at all? 34 knots. I see 17.5, 19.4, 23.3, 25 23.3. We're getting close. 27.2, 27.2, and then it starts dropping again. 19, 17, 19. So we do not see wind speeds even close, even close. To the minimum, the absolute minimum that we should see for a tropical storm, which would be 34 to 63. So we are a good seven knots below anything that's even close to tropical storm, let alone hurricane. All right. Now I just want to point that out. This is exactly what we saw at this buoy when it when the storm passed by, and it's what we're seeing here at this buoy. Now I want to. I want to go over some concerns that I have about this buoy, about this, this hurricane in general. First of all, let me reiterate the fact that I've traced four of these so far this year. This is number four, and the first two were in Hawaii. And as I pointed out, the thing to trace was the fact that 
the closest buoy we had to where these alleged hurricanes were coming from was so far away from the actual storm that I couldn't trace it. Now, there's a really good reason why Hawaii doesn't get hurricanes. I mean, it's, we've had one hurricane in the last hundred years, and supposedly we had two this summer that we couldn't register. Well, it's not that Hawaii doesn't get storms, okay? They do. They get typhoons and stuff. And all of the buoys that NOAA has, NOAA has tons of buoys out here, but none of them, conveniently, were in the trajectory that the storm was coming from. Now, the storm, I wish I had known this at the time I was checking this during the Hawaii storms, the water needs to be at least 82 degrees for it to be a hurricane. And you can't, you're not going to get that, those kinds of temperatures out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, out in the middle of nowhere. And you generally, you generally do not get them out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean either. In fact, the only buoy that I was able to register any temperature at for water temperature was this one here, 41 Oh, 49, and that was just right at 82 degrees, you guys. But these other buoys along here, they don't give temperature readings. Buoy 41047 doesn't show a temperature, a water temperature, which is very convenient that there's just no water temperature here. But that's the that's the, and I say that sarcastically because this is what this is the this is the nature of the frustration of trying to track this, you guys. I want you to conceptually think about when a police officer is trying to capture somebody for speeding, they are going to set their speed radar machines in the middle of open, busy traffic, right? Well, that's the same thing we do with our weather buoys. We put them in the, in the trajectory of common storms. We're not, just like a police officer is not going to set a speed trap up in the middle of the woods, we don't set up buoys outside of areas where we've historically gotten weather. So for us to have had three storms in the last 30 days that don't have any history of having storms come through them in exactly the path they came is a big red flag to me. It's a big red flag to me because usually when a storm is heading in this or when a storm is located anywhere around out here, it is because it has come up, as we noticed last year, through the Caribbean where the water is really, really warm and then it either hangs a hard right to go off to Bermuda or goes up straight into the Carolinas or it goes off into the Gulf of Mexico but not ever, ever have, do we have it coming from the dead middle of the Atlantic Ocean straight forward to the Carolinas, mostly because the water out here is generally not 82 degrees. It's just not where hurricanes form. They usually come up from the Caribbean. So that's one big red flag. The fact that these, these hurricanes have conveniently missed any one of the buoys that would actually register it there. Now, <clears throat> it's not 100% convenience, because, and let me just let me just track this for you guys, there is a storm going by here. It doesn't register anywhere near the wind speeds that you need for it to be called a hurricane. Now here is my next big problem with this storm. What defines a hurricane, you guys, is a wind storm. Not necessarily a water storm. You do not ever measure a hurricane by how much rain falls. You exclusively measure a hurricane by how much the wind has blown. Now there is wind coming through here. We have seen wind speeds get up to 29 knots, which isn't even isn't even tropical storm force winds, but we do see that there has been a storm that has been going through it, it passed over this buoy, but not anywhere near even tropical storm force winds. Same thing with buoy 41047. It's not tropical storm force winds. Okay, now there could be there could be 101 explanations for that. It could very well be that there is a 60 mile radius on a 140 mile hurricane going through here. But given the fact that the biggest prediction of trouble that is headed towards this part of our country happens to be rain, I'm a little dubious about what the heck is actually going on here. We do see that there is some sort of storm, but it's not a hurricane, at least that we can track by buoys, because this particular storm is conveniently tiptoeing around these buoys. Now we'll know more when this storm gets closer to shore because we have a lot more buoys around here and as the storm gets closer to shore we will be able to read personal weather stations, we'll get all the airports around here, we'll get a lot more data unless of course they pull the plug like they did in Puerto Rico. Anyway, now let me just talk about the rain here. I was curious to find out about what the average rainfall is for a hurricane and, and I want you guys to pay close attention to this because there was a research paper 
um, put together by William Gray in 1981, and he did statistical analysis of the rainfall produced by a typical hurricane, running averages based on the averages of the hurricanes and the known amounts of rain that had fallen up until that point in 1981. And I think it's fascinating that such a storm sheds about 1.5 centimeters of rain daily across a circular area with a 665 kilometer or 414 mile radius. I want you guys to think about that real hard. An average, at least as of 1981, the average rainfall for a hurricane was less than an inch of rain. Now don't underestimate the damage that an inch of rain can do. I want to share with you my personal experience here of what happened in 2014 in my neighborhood. We had what is considered a historic flood. And we had, this is 696, and you guys can see this is an expressway that's completely filled up with water. This is a good 20 feet of water here sitting in 696, and I'll just read you. And you can see, like, I mean, you can just see that this whole area was totally flooded. There was a car on my street, a brand new BMW. One of my neighbors got a brand new BMW. And this flood water just came out of nowhere, and his car was under four feet of water. When I say underneath, it was up to the, up to his window in his car, and his car engine died right smack dab in the middle of our street, which is just a residential area. It was, it was out of control crazy. And you can see that here um, in this picture right there. I mean, that's just what happened. It was like our neighborhoods just totally got flooded like this. So what I wanted to do, well, here, first I'll read this, uh, I'll read this little clip here from this article where this guy, he says, the embankment let loose, said Payne on Tuesday, as he stood on Stevenson Highway and looked down at his stranded truck. A 20-foot wave of water swamped the truck, and the ground came down around me. Okay, that actually did happen. You can see where this highway is completely flooded. So I was curious how much rain actually fell that day. And I was kind of shocked, but not 100% shocked, to find out that on that particular day, you guys, we only had four to six inches of rain. But it was the fact that it fell over the course of four hours. If you consider how much area is collecting water, four inches of rain, all of it going down to the lowest point is a very dangerous place, a very dangerous situation. And the people obviously in the lower lying areas were the most uh, impacted. But even those of us who weren't even close to a flood zone still experienced, like, flooding of a BMW on my very street, which was just out of out of control. It only lasted for a couple of hours, but but my point is that four to six inches of rain can cause catastrophic damage. And it did. It flooded everybody's neighborhood. You guys would not believe the junk we had all over the street. It was just crazy. So why do I bring this up? Well, you guys, they are conflating a hurricane with rain. And they are conflating it with not just a little rain. They're conflating this hurricane, equating it with the prediction that we're going to have 40, that's four zero inches of rain. You guys, that is biblical amounts of rain. Now, I will remind you that the Bible says that God is not going to cover the entire earth with rain anymore. So if you people just happen to be caught up in that, you might think the whole world is flooding. It won't be. We'll get a rainbow afterwards, and uh, the whole world won't be flooding. But I'm telling you, if they're predicting 40 inches of rain, you guys, it's going to feel like the whole world is flooding. And it's going to be super, super dangerous. And my concern, you guys, is that how do they know? How do they know four days before a storm, when a storm is literally 1,200 to 2,000 miles away from shore, how can they pinpoint with such precision that it's going to be 40 inches of rain in this particular region? You guys... Let me explain to you how models work. Models use historical data to crunch together forecasts of things that are going to happen. So in order for you to know what will happen, you have to have a very good understanding of what has happened. In order for you to know what feeds into the probability of something happening, you have to understand all the variables around why something happens, okay? To be able to enter those into your models so your models can forecast. Now here's the caveat. If you've never experienced something in the past, you can't build a model of historical data to forecast it happening in the future. In other words, you can't predict that the water on Grand Traverse Bay is going to come on fire if it's never happened before. It, it, if it doesn't have a history 
of having happened in the past, there's no way a model is going to predict it. So what is very concerning to me, what worries me a lot about this, you guys, is the precision which, with, with which these people can forecast something that has never, ever happened before. There is no hurricane that has brought 40 inches of rain f with anybody knowing it four or five days before it hits from 2,000 miles away. How do they know this, you guys? That's my biggest concern, is that the problems that are going to impact this part of the country is likely not going to be the wind speeds based on what we're seeing here with the buoys. Now, that could change as we get closer to the, as the storm gets closer to the buoys, I will be able to track it for you more with more precision. And as I've showed you, the wind speeds of the buoys, whether I've plotted them properly on Google Earth or not, the wind speeds within a 100-mile radius of these buoys are not registering the wind speeds that we expect. Now, I have plotted these properly, and I apologize again for having done that last video with it to the south when it should have been to the north. But, but either way, my problem is this, you guys. The reason the storm is going to be super bad is because we're going to get, like, cataclysmic amounts of rain. Now, let me just let me just share this with any of the people who might live in the area. You guys, this amount of rain is such a dangerous amount of rain that if you are anywhere close to this, remember those pictures of those people down in New Orleans with their, on top of the roof of their houses? You guys, I don't think the roof of your houses is going to be enough. I think that this is going to be so much rain that it's actually going to go over the roof of your houses, and it could literally like drown lots and lots of people. 40 inches of rain is, it's, it's, it's scary amounts of rain. So I, I just want you guys to understand that if this is what happens with four inches of rain, seriously, you guys, get out of there. If you're anywhere near this area, please leave. Not because of the windstorms, not because you're afraid that your, your roof is going to get taken off your house, but because you're going to be drowned. You're going to drown. You are literally going to drown with the amount of water that they're forecasting coming with this, which has nothing to do with the hurricane. I mean, you can't predict this kind of rain. It just, it's, it's unprecedented amounts of rain. It's going to kill people. People are going to drown to death. Get out of there and grab whatever is important to you and realize once you leave, you are never coming back to your home and your stuff again because this is going to devastate everywhere this rain is going to fall. You know, when our neighborhood got this kind of a rainfall, you guys, everybody's basement was flooded within like a five-mile radius of my house. My house was spared by God's grace, and I do mean true grace. God saved my house from being flooded, but every single house in the entire neighborhood, every house was completely flooded. And uh, the stuff that people had to throw away, and that was only with four inches of rain, you guys. So please, if you're in that area, get out. Take your most precious things. Grab your, your kids' first grade drawings and your, you know, your wedding mementos and your photographs and your computer hard drives and uh, your Bibles and just run. Everything else can be replaced, but get the things that are irreplaceable. Your, your diaries, your photo albums, your yearbook, you know, your favorite stuffed animal, and don't forget your pets and your kitty litter boxes and all that stuff, but get out, you guys, because this is 40 inches of rain is, is going to kill a lot of people. So... Anyway, I will keep you posted on what's going on with the storm as we get closer to some areas here. And that's it, you guys. That's all I've got for now.